Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, and if you're new here, hi! Uh, I did an art collab with an artist on YouTube, and her channel name is Ira Sketchbook, so go check her out. I would link her channel in the description below, and I would also show the art that she made for the collab at the end of this video, so do stick around for that. So basically, for this collab, we sent each other two mood boards each, and what the other artist had to do was interpret the mood board themselves and make art based on that mood board. So I sent her two mood boards and she did the same for me. So go check her video out to see the mood boards that I sent her and I will be working with the mood boards that she sent me to make art today. Let's get right into making the art. This is what the first mood board that she sent me looks like and I'm just going to be trying to brainstorm and just like make art based on what I see here. The fact that I did thumbnail sketches is actually quite shocking because although I am a strong preacher of thumbnail sketching, I do not practice it quite often. The most I usually do is like make a rough sketch in my sketchbook and that is not something that I do often. More often than not, I find myself jumping straight into IBA Phoenix and just making art off the back. Surprisingly, for this one, I went all out and I even did a lighting and shadow test just to know how I wanted things to go from there. And while I did want to make a like flat color test to just kind of nail things down more, I didn't feel like going through the background and coloring every single item because the background is like really detailed so I did not have the patience to stick through and like color each and every single detail knowing fully well that when I'm done with the piece I would also do the same thing. That is why you can see that I discontinued coloring the rough sketch. Okay, so I am already doing the liner of the background and I would like to talk a bit about my inspiration for this piece. So from the mood board, I figured that it would be some kind of cottage core. I don't know, it's something that just stood out to me because it had lots of kettles, mushrooms and like books and it just made me think of like a little fairy or like a girl living in a cottage just in you know just like all those disney cartoons and just like in a cottage basically so i settled for drawing a girl sitting and reading in a kitchen because a lot of the items in the mood board just pointed a finger to kitchen or a kitchen and there was one that like looked like a cafe and I would have gone with that idea but I liked the cottage core feel more than just like a girl reading in the cafe so I decided to go for uh, like a girl in a cottage in her kitchen just like sitting there and reading a book. I added lots of books to the ground just so it's clear enough that she is literally so obsessed with books. I made her be inside view so like the background is more visible and the background is like the main focal point of the illustration because I felt like that's a good way to like translate the mood board into my illustration so that was what I went for. For her dress, I didn't go for anything fancy, I just gave her a long sleeve and one of these cottage core dresses that usually have a slit to like meet tie or so. And at this point, you can see this cat here because there was also like a cat in the mood board and I honestly did really want to add a cat but then I forgot when I was doing line art and at the point where I remembered, I was like, I didn't want any extra stress of going back to like line the cat, color it, render it and just like make it fit into the ground again so I settled for not having the cat be there again. Okay, okay, so now I want to talk about my mental state when I was working on the piece you can see that I left the ground liner to go work on my character a little bit and this is because I felt demotivated 
as I was lining the background because it just felt like an endless repetitive process. I was just going through adding lines and lines and lines and it didn't seem like it was going to end. Plus, in a bit to make the liner look more smooth and neat, I overlapped a lot of lines so there was so much cleanup needed to be done and every time I would think about this piece I would just close IVA Phoenix and go do something else. It was making me really demotivated to draw so when I abandoned this piece to go work on a couple of other artwork like the artwork from my previous video about trying the noise art challenge I came back with a fresh mind and I was like you know what if any part of the process is stressing me out then I should just skip it and go do something else that I feel comfortable doing and when I'm more ready and more mentally prepared to work on that part of the process I could go back to it or just like scrape it out completely and find something to do with the character and that is what I decided to do I went back and finished up my character, lined her, rendered her and just like shaded everything and then I went back to the ground and I was feeling more confident. With the first piece done, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this mood board was like super nostalgic for me and if I was to give it any name right off the bat would have been like childhood nostalgia because it reminded me so much about my childhood and I just wanted to make a piece centered around that. In my initial sketches, in like a little sticky note, I just wanted to draw a little girl surrounded by top bubbles of little things from the mood board that did remind me about my childhood. But I did end up changing my mind because of a couple of things that I would now talk about. Taking a second look at the mood board, it started to look more like farm court to me because like there were little farm animals and there were like also fruits at some point of the mood board and I was just like, oh, Oh, this is starting to look like a farm core so I decided to make my piece centered around that but I did end up keeping the like little girl because I felt like she would still be useful for the farm core because a specific section of the mood board had like um, band-aids and I felt like that would be good to put on a child because what mature adult like has band-aids all over them you know like all those sticker tattoos and all so yeah i just felt like it would go better with a child and that was something i wanted to add to my piece so i just left my character as a child for her outfit i made her wear an overall because that's literally the first outfit that comes to mind when you think of a farm girl for her pose, I made her to just be like eating a snack and she had a dog next to her. The second side of the screen, I added the flowers and the grasses later on because I felt like it was looking super empty so I wanted it to look like there was something going on there so I just decided to add like a couple of flowers and grasses. By the way, I drew this with my stylus and it was super fun, so much fun than using my fingers to draw. There's like 3 minutes left in this video, so chit chat time. So this collab would have been out like a long time ago if I didn't take so much time getting the art ready. And hear me out, I was feeling super burnt out at the time, I was feeling demotivated to draw and I just had so much going on in my life to even sit down and work on the piece so that is what took a lot of time and i felt really bad knowing that it was me that was delaying the collab because usually when i have a collab i try really hard to make sure my piece is ready like before the deadline so that um we do not we do not run into any issues along the way but this time it was me that was kind of like holding us back and it i really did i really did i did really i really did feel bad so yeah and after my spring break i am going to go to a time when i wouldn't have that much time to draw and i would like find very little time to draw in my sketchbook not even think of drawing on my phone to make like digital art so I'm thinking of like posting more on my community tab or like my traditional art do let me know what you all think about that in the comments okay back to this piece I wanted to do a solid feel for the background but I wasn't sure like 
it looked right because it felt really off so i decided to put like a little square and just like fill it in with a sky color and just leave it there and it did end up looking really nice and unique so i like that little touch of the piece Oh, and isn't it funny how the two illustrations I made in this video have quite similar color palettes? I just think that it's really cool. If you're still watching, please leave a comment with purple hearts just so I know that someone watched to this point of the video. Oh, and I made a Draw This In Your Style like sometime last year, I think, and I haven't really gotten to announcing the winners, so I, I'm thinking that maybe my next video should be about announcing the winners of my Draw This In Your Style challenge. So do look, let me know in the comments if you entered and if you're excited to hear about the results. And I'm pretty much done with this piece as well. I absolutely love how this one looks, but my fave is definitely the first one because the lighting was just so amazing. For the second part of this video, I am going to be showing you the art that Ira made with the mood boards that I sent her, but I won't be showing you the mood boards that I sent her. Go watch her video if you want to see that. So this is the first one and I think it looks really nice. It did actually match the theme of the corresponding mood board that I sent her and I just absolutely love how she drew the outfit and how she drew the hair. Her art, her art, oh my god, her art style is like really pretty and I love how this turned out. The second drawing she made is also really nice. I absolutely love how the hair look. I like the fact that she made the hairstyles really different and the outfits look really nice. I love her art style like I said earlier and I like the way she like draws bodies and the way that she gave them different poses and made them interact with different objects. I think it's really nice. Don't forget to go check Iris channel out because she's like a really amazing artist. Go check her out, subscribe and support her channel. Anyways, that is for today's video. I hope I you to try this with your friends or even to just draw. I'll leave a link to Iris channel in the description and so don't forget to go check her out and support her channel. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed the video. Also, let me know which illustration is your favorite that I drew in this video. Do have a blessed day and bye!